The world of Death Stranding has some of the most imaginative technology ever made in fiction. From babies in jars, internet that uses the afterlife to send information, and shoulder-mounted terrain scanners, Death Stranding has a lot to offer when it comes to original pieces of technology and more. One thing you must understand about technology in Death Stranding is that it's perfectly adapted to its world. Everything the characters use is somehow connected to the environment and its challenges. So, let's take a look. Spoiler warning for the game. Odor Deck. Single-handedly the most iconic piece of tech that has come out of this trending has to be the Odor Deck Terrain Scanner. The Odor Deck is a shoulder-mounted sensor that scans the area ahead of you and shows you where it's best to step and where not to step. This is signified by blue, yellow and red markings on the ground. This is a very important tool for anyone that wishes to traverse the outside world. The Odor Deck also has other features. One is that it can scan cargo tags enabling porters to find and deliver lost cargo easily. Other features include the flashlight and, with in-game upgrades, you can even negate enemy sensor pings, detect humans and project holograms. Odor decks can be seen to come in different variants. The most known is the Bridges Standard Odor Deck with 5 points that Sam can be seen using in the game. Porters and mules use one with three points. Mama and homo demons can be seen with special ones. Porter equipment. Apart from the three-point odor deck, porters have a walking stick and radio communicator. They can be seen wearing yellow bags. Compared to the bridges suit Sam wears for most of the game, the porter suit does not have a timefall detector, meaning porters have to put their hood up manually when it starts to rain. Cargo. Everything the porters carry is stored in these slick cargo crates, wrapped in damage sensor tape. It's a reactive tape that changes color based on the damage state of the cargo. Exoskeletons. Exoskeletons are another tool made for porters, built solely for better transportation of cargo, which means there are no offensive exoskeletons in the game. Starting off, there is the power skeleton, designed to lighten the burden of cargo for porters it essentially carries some of the weight for you. This big boy has three levels. With each subsequent level, the power skeleton can carry more weight and uses less battery. The speed skeleton is, as you would have guessed, made for speed. It can also allow you to jump super far. It has three levels. Each level has more carrying capacity and better battery usage. The speed skeleton does allow you to carry more cargo, but it isn't as much as the power skeleton. Last one is the all-terrain skeleton, designed for quick movement on rough terrain. You unlock this skeleton in the snowy area of the game where you need to use it, otherwise you will move very slowly. Another tech from the snow zone is the thermal pad. You can wear these on your hips and shoulders. They will provide you with warmth, allow you to rest in the snow and reduce the amount snowy conditions drain stamina. Related to the skeletons is the floating carrier. Used to transport cargo, its advantage is in the ability to float, meaning it is unhindered by rough terrain. The floating is sustained by continually consuming stored chiral crystals. Bridge Babies Bridge Babies are another iconic piece of tech coming from Death Stranding. It allows the person connected to it to see BTs, the undead enemy of the game. It uses the odor deck to point in the direction of the nearest BT, their distance signified by the speed of the blinking motion the odor deck does. How the BB is able to do this is unknown, but it has something to do with the fact that it's an unborn baby, not being truly in the world of the living, as it has never been born. The technology of bridge babies was first discovered when a surgeon was performing a C-section on a brain-dead mother. The doctor came into contact with the umbilical cord of the fetus. Upon contact, he uttered the words, Who the hell? After that, a void out occurred. After this event, it was theorized that if this could be recreated, brain dead mother, also known as a still mother, fetus, umbilical cord, humanity could unlock the mysteries of the death stranding. They called the fetuses bridge babies and the BB experiments began. Bridge babies are kept in portable pods that simulate the feeling of being inside their mother's womb. BBs will cease to function if they feel like they are not in their still mother's womb. As you know, BB pods are designed to mimic the conditions inside a human womb and are key to preserving the BB's connections with this world and the next. Well, 
Recent research now suggests that BBs are capable of producing something not unlike a dolphin's sound waves. These pulses travel through the amniotic fluid and out the other side, bounce off BTs and return as echoes, allowing a BB to ascertain the location of threats. Pretty cool, right? Cupid. Designed by Bridges researchers Mama and Lachna, the Cupid is a device that contains all of the necessary security and operation protocols to integrate a terminal into the chiral network. And they make a really cool sound while doing it. Chiral Network It's a communication network designed by Bridges for the purpose of connecting isolated cities using the beach. The Chiral Network makes use of the beach to allow us to travel through time. Sending large amounts of data takes large amounts of time. But the thing about beaches is time doesn't pass the same way in them as it does out here. Routing data through the beach is like jumping to a point earlier in that journey, thereby cutting it shorter, much shorter. Just imagine. Massive amounts of data transferred almost instantaneously. That's what we're trying to achieve with the chiral network in a nutshell. So that explains what the chiral network does. But how is it able to use the beach? It actually uses bridge babies as a way to connect to the beach, a sort of human router. At the end of the game, we can see Sam deliver a BB pod from a distro center to Ejna City, meaning every major city in the game has its own BB that allows it to connect to the beach. The chiral network allows for generation of chiral holograms. They are like normal holograms, but much better, with no delay in movement, and they also look like real people. Standing in front of one, you couldn't tell it wasn't a real person. Chiral printers. Chiral printers are basically super good 3D printers. In the game, you deliver one of these to a distribution center, allowing you to make items there. With the chiral printer, you can print various tools like ladders and climbing anchors. You can also print a PCC, or a portable chiral constructor. PCCs are different from chiral printers in that you can't make items, you can make buildings. These include bridge, generator, post box, watchtower, and with a level 2 PCC, safe house, timefall shelter, and zipline. Zipline are single-handedly the best buildings in the game, allowing you to traverse the world at high speeds with little to no effort. Energy. I mentioned a generator, which leads me to the question, how are people making electricity in Death Stranding? In the east section of the game, we can find a facility called the Wind Farm. This single facility provides energy to the entirety of America. It can do this thanks to the beach. By sending electricity through the afterlife, the farm doesn't suffer energy loss due to long distances. Weapons. Death Stranding has some amazing weapon designs. Nice, clean and futuristic. They look this way because they are made with the chiral printers, essentially like 3D printed weapons of our time. The hematic grenade is the first and one of the most essential weapons you unlock in the game. They work by siphoning your blood and loading it into the anti-BD grenade. There are also EX grenades. These use your waste products instead. EX grenade number zero uses Sam's shower water and makes BDs flee for a very short time. EX grenade number one uses Sam's urine and makes BDs flee for a short time. EX grenade number two uses Sam's feces and lures BDs to an area. My favorite design is the anti BT handgun, a non lethal weapon. It fires Sam's blood to dispatch target BTs. There are two levels to this weapon, with the second having more ammo and an optical sight. The assault rifle is a lethal, multi-purposed assault rifle used by bridges and terrorists. There are three levels to the weapon. Second level and up, the gun can shoot hematic rounds, which are bullets capable of killing BTs. Third level has a retractable silencer. There is also a non-lethal assault rifle that is identical. The only difference is that it shoots rubber bullets and the color of the weapon is different. The handgun is a lethal, anti-personal weapon. Homo demons are seen using this weapon in the game. It has two levels. Level 2 has access to hematic rounds and a scope, increased mag capacity, as well as a suppressor. Another of my favorites is the bola gun, a non-lethal, anti-personal weapon that fires binding wires. 
or bolus, to immobilize the target. The wires contain Sam's blood, meaning it can also immobilize BTs. It has two levels, and on level 2, it has more ammo and a bigger range. The shotgun is a lethal anti-personnel weapon. There are two levels to the weapon. Level 2 has access to hematic rounds, a scope and an increased mag capacity. There's also a riot shotgun, which is the same as the shotgun, the only exception being it shoots rubber bullets. The sticky gun is a bizarre weapon that shoots out glue attached to a cord. It's used by mules to steal packages from afar. The grenade launcher. The grenade launcher is a revolver style grenade launcher that can launch up to four different types of grenades. There is a hematic grenade, explosive grenade, tranquilizer grenade and a slip grenade. Hematic is effective against BTs, explosive is a lethal anti-personnel one, tranquilizer creates a cloud of sleeping gas, slip grenade covers the area in slippery liquid. There is also a remote detonation version of the grenade launcher which allows you to detonate your grenades at will and not on impact. Vehicles. There are two vehicle types in Death Stranding that each come with many variants. Starting off with the one that can be seen at the start of the game, Reverse Trike. At low speeds, it functions as a trike with two wheels in the front. When you accelerate, the front wheels combine into one, making it a normal bike. There are several variants of the reverse trike. They are Long Range. Long Range has two large batteries on it, allowing it to travel greater distances. Defensive, that has two defense units, creating a protective field around the bike. The bike takes less damage from gunfire and other impacts, as well as neutralizing electrical attacks. The transporter is the last type. This type has a sort of basket in the back that allows it to transport more cargo than any other reverse trike type. The truck is a very useful vehicle in the stranding and there are two variants in game. Cicada Phi is a truck manufactured by Cicada, an American automobile company. It's used by bridges and mules. Mules possess a custom armored version of the Cicada that cannot be crafted in game. You can drive it though if you take it from them. Cicada MC2000 is the cargo truck that you will ride most of the time in game. Based on the Cicada Phi, this model has been made specifically for bridges. There are two versions of this truck, one with an open cargo bed made for corpse disposal teams and one with a closed cargo bed for special delivery teams. The truck can be upgraded in game to have a larger battery allowing you to take it on longer runs. There is also a defensive version that instead of batteries has electromagnetic shield units. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind.